In this section, we will look at Kubernetes logging and few common issues with logging and understand how to use logging to identify problems in the cluster. In this video, we will look at Kubernetes logging architecture and logging patterns. So let's look at Kubernetes logging architecture. I characterize Kubernetes logging into two, basic logging and centralized or cluster level logging. In basic logging, the pod's standard output and error stream is redirected to a file and you can view the same using the kubectl logs command. So let's look at some examples. Now this is my cluster and these are the pods in the default namespace. And here are the pods in the cube system namespace. So doing kubectl logs minus minus help shows many of the examples of basic logging like the return snapshot logs from pod nginx with only one container, you can just run kubectl logs nginx and so on. So you can go through some of these basic commands for logging. What we will do is we will use some of these commands in the current cluster. Now this is like if you want to see all the logs from pod nginx in the last one hour. So you can use the minus minus since option with the logs command. This is another very handy example. If a container has died and it's no longer there, you can actually use the kubectl logs with the previous container option. Okay, so what we will do is we will take a look at the logs of the OOM app pod. We'll do kubectl logs followed by the pod name and this is what we see. So we have the cube API server. So let's look at the logs for the cube API server pods. Again, the same command cube cut logs followed by the pod name. Now, as you can see, there are a huge amount of logs and the output is continuously scrolling. But this doesn't help us. So what can we do when there are huge amount of logs? So cube cut logs command has lots of options to help us out as we have seen earlier with the minus minus help option. Now, for example, we can use the tail option to see the last few lines from the logs. So the same thing, kubectl logs minus minus tail. And I want to see the last 30 lines followed by the pod name and the namespace. Right. So this is much better. So we can also see the logs since last few minutes using the minus minus since option. So in this case, the logs of last five minutes will appear. Now let's say you want to stream the logs for a pod. Now here is an example of the same. So the same kubectl. So what we will do is we will use or we will stream the logs for a specific pod. So we will use kubectl logs minus f which indicates that you stream the log, stream the logs for pod metric server. So this is like the tail option and as you can see I can keep on seeing the log right so so this is equivalent to the tail option instead of seeing specific lines what i do is i follow the log now this will stay here and as and when new logs keeps coming i can see the logs so let's take another example where a pod consists of multiple containers and i want to get the logs this is my calico pod and as you can see this calico pod consists of multiple containers calico dash node and install dash cni so if i just use kubectl logs with the pod name it doesn't work so what i have to do is i have to specifically give the container name for which i want the logs so what i will do here is kubectl logs the pod name and I will give the container name as well. So I want to see the logs for calico dash node container within this pod. And this is what I will do. Again, this is scrolling, so may not be of much use. You can use the options like tail or since and so on and so forth. Now, basic logging is enabled by default and is very helpful in debugging issues with pods. So these logs are in files from where kubectl logs command picks up. Now for completeness, let's understand where the actual log files are kept. 
So this can come in handy if Kubernetes is not working and you are unable to use the kubectl log command. So let's log in to one of the nodes. I log in to 122.35. Now all the logs are in var log pods directory. Okay, so there will be subdirectories named with pod UID under which you will find the logs. So you can get the UID by looking at the pod spec using the kubectl get command. So we have seen that in previous section. So if you go inside the subdirectories, you will get the log files and that is the one which is used by basic logging. Now let's take a look at this. You go to the OMAP, the subdirectory and the name and you see the json.log. So that's the log which is picked up by kubectl logs command as part of the basic logging. Now let's take a look at another example. What we will do is we will use get pod minus o yaml to dump the spec and get the UID. So we have the UID. We also want the details on the node where the pod is deployed. So we will use the minus o wide option with get pod. So as you can see, the oom app is in node vm1. And looking at the cluster details, that tells us the IP of VM1. Now first let's run the kubectl logs umap command to so see the log. So this is the log for the umap pod. Now what I will do is I will log in to the node and will go to var log pods directory followed by the subdirectory named with the pod UID and I should see the same log in the JSON log. In the name and this is where I see the JSON.log file and that has the logs. Right, So this is the same log that we saw via the kubectl logs command. Now there could be cases where log files are missing. Now in such cases you need to look at the node for any issues like file system errors or no free space errors and so on. So if log files are missing, kubectl logs will not give you any output.